David here with Optiglob Services. Today we will be completely taking apart an original Xbox. First we'll start by flipping it over. Now normally there are four rubber feet here. Most people just completely remove the feet like they did to this one. Personally, I like to just pull up half to expose the screws underneath. There are also two hidden screws. You can peel back the stickers or just poke through them like I do. Either way, remove these six screws. Flip it back over. It may take some wiggling, but the top cover lifts straight up. Next we want to remove the ribbon cable from this clip, then pull it free from the hard drive. To remove the power plug from the hard drive, I just use needle nose pliers and pry it loose. Then we want to snake the wire from these clips. Then remove the hard drive caddy screw. Now we can lift the hard drive out. Then finish getting the wire out if you didn't do it before. Now remove these two screws. I've noticed that on some consoles, these two screws can be shorter. Lift out the DVD drive and swing it to one side. That way we can remove these two cables. With the DVD drive out of the way, we can now remove the two cables from the mainboard. To remove the power supply board, first we need to disconnect the cable from the mainboard. On some models, like this one, there is a clip on the side of the connector. You need to press it in to disconnect the cable. Next, we want to remove these two screws. Then take the power supply board and pull it towards the front. Then lift it out. To remove the fan, first unplug the power connector. Then on each side of the fan, there is a clip. While lifting up on the fan, you need to pry the clips away from the fan. If you didn't notice with me struggling, it's a very tight fit. Once we get it up, we have to pry the clips past a second tab on the fan. Next, we remove these three wire connectors from the mainboard. Then remove these screws. To remove the mainboard, we want to grab the board, lift the front up first, then pull it out. To remove the controller ports, remove these screws. Then pull up on the back, then pull them out. This cable here is for the buttons on the front. To get to that, we need to get the faceplate off. To do that, we need to pry out the faceplate while lifting up on these three tabs here. This can also be very stubborn. After we get the first clip, we can just pull out the faceplate as you do the rest of the clips. With the faceplate off, we can snake the wire through the hole. To get the metal cage off, we have to pull this plastic shield to the left. It's glued down, it doesn't have to be removed, unless you are doing something to the cage itself. Then just wiggle the cage free. Setting all that aside, back to the hard drive. Remove these four screws. Then it just comes right out. Back to the DVD drive. To remove it from its caddy, we need to free it from these clips. We can use a pry tool, or just push the sides out to release the clips. Then it just comes right out. To remove the buttons from the faceplate, we need to push down on this tab while pulling out on the bottom of the PCB. To 
to get these buttons out, pull out on these tabs here, then push down on this tab again. Then pull the buttons the rest of the way out. The LED diffuser just comes right out. Back to the main board. We are going to remove the heat sinks. We lift the black lever up. See down there? They have a hook and latch. We need to push down on this while prying the hook away from the latch while lifting it up. Now that it's free, release the hook from the other side and lift it off. Then we can remove the heat sink. Sometimes they are stuck on really good. You may have to pry the heat seek away from the processor. I will probably have to show you on the other one. This one is basically the same thing, but without the black lever. Just push down here, pry the hook from the latch while pushing up. Then unhook the other side. This one is stuck on there pretty good. Just get a pry tool, put it in between the housing and the heat sink, and pry up releasing the dried thermal paste. And that's it. Now you can clean, repair, or customize your original Xbox. Thanks for watching.